G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, seems like it was a little bit like I thought. It was a buy the rumour, sell the news. So, everything kind of went up yesterday and today when Coinbase uh, came out, things are down a little bit. Not too much though, so nothing too drastic. But hey, look at this Bitcoin dominance. It just continues to go down. 51.2% getting so close to going under 50%. ETH dominance rising and ETH prices rising, so it goes hand in hand there. And gas way down. I haven't seen it that low for, well, I suppose it's been that low in the last sort of week, but outside of that, it's been sitting much, much higher. I haven't seen it below, I think, 77, 78 in a long time, though. So it's still expensive to do anything on ETH, which is disappointing. But anyway, we'll move on. We all know my thoughts on that. All right, bit of green, bit of red there, kind of mixed bag. So what are we going to see? All right. What's really pumped in the last 24 hours? Because yesterday, things basically everything was sort of pumping. Let's have a look. All right, XDC Network, never heard of it. It's coming from outside of the top 100. Status, haven't really heard of that. Exact same sort of thing, I'm going to say, come out of the top 100. Wazir X, there we go. Definitely heard about that. The uh, Indian Exchange seems to be doing quite well and has bounced back from its... Uh, you know, retracement, so that's really, really good. Amp, Stacks, Yearn uh, Finance, Chainlink is on quite a tear at the moment, doing extremely well. Maker, Nexo, Cosmos, Raven, VChain continues to go up. So look, we've got a number of coins doing quite well there, and that's really, really good. But the overall market cap is down a little bit, and we're going into the weekend. Weekend starts tomorrow uh, here in Australia, uh, and so it'll sort of be the day after really in the states and things like that so we've got to wait and see what happens to the total market cap and where do the prices of all these coins come down to all right we know what's done well what hasn't done so well let's have a look what's not done well all right sire coin 12 percent, still up 20 percent for the week so not too bad xrp having a pullback uh, and again nothing really wrong with that uh, it's done quite well nearly 100 percent in seven days so can't complain about that uh, still a bit of a pullback, but again, I mean, these pullbacks are quite small and you just go to the right-hand side and generally they've still had a pretty good week anyway. So the gains were pretty good and the losses were pretty minimal. So most people would have to be pretty happy with that. But, you know, in total, we are still down 1.3%. With the weekend coming, I think we'll probably go a little bit lower again. I, like I suspected, I did think it might have been a bit of a, you know, buy the news, uh, sorry, buy the rumor, sell the news. And that's pretty much what happened. All right, moving on. Let's have a look. Bitcoin chart. Here we are. So I've got the moving averages going. So we can see it came and bounced almost perfectly off the 50-day moving average. That's just where all the support is at the moment. Like it did over here. This is really the optimum buying opportunity at the moment, the 50-day moving average. This is where it's really getting bought up. Now, we need to remember that based on previous history, a couple of times we have come down and bounced off the 200-day moving average uh, in a bull market. So far, we haven't done, well, we did do that, but gee, it was a long, long time ago. The last time we touched it was back over here. So that was not long after uh, the, the pandemic sort of crisis. That was that big dump. And we crossed it here, and since then we haven't come, oh well, no, over here. We came back and touched it, but that's what, 11th of May last year was the last time we touched it. So we are really in a quite uh, bullish sort of market, no doubt about it. So, I mean, you know, when was the last time we touched the 100? So there we go, we touched the 100 here, but again, that was back in September, it wasn't, when was the last time? Uh, was October last year. So again, it's been many, many months since we've been able to come back and touch the 100. So, you know, <sighs> be careful is all I would say. And again, David Swartz was saying, you know, consider taking some profits and things like that. Probably not a bad idea, but you got to make your mind up. You know, it's not financial advice. You know, I do what I do and you do what you do. And, you know, that's the way it is. If you decide to, you know, follow suit with things I do, then, you know, that's your decision. Uh, some of my decisions, most of my decisions uh, have been pretty good, but that's because it's a bull market. It's easy to make good decisions in bull markets. It's when it turns on you, then can you make, you know, the good decisions, which are generally the tough, all right, yep, sell, I lost a whole stack of profit, but I'm still hopefully in profit, as opposed to, oh, no, this is just a bounce and it's going to go higher, and maybe it does, 
but when it doesn't go higher or it's again because this is what happens uh, in a bear market it'll come down here and then it'll bounce back up and you think no nah, it's going to do it and then it falls down here and then you think oh no now it's going to do it and then it comes back here and then falls down even further again so you know when it's done you got to just accept that it's done and look even if it's not actually completely done as long as you've at least got your money back you know and you're not losing any money then you don't have anything to lose after that it's all just gravy but again i don't want to harp on and tell you exactly what to do because i never offer financial advice but just consider taking some profits we are in quite a run at the moment and i'm not saying it can't go a whole lot higher but it could go a whole lot lower it could turn around in the next couple of days Bitcoin goes down to 32,000 and that would really really wreck people I just you know I can I can see it people would be losing their minds in all fairness so let's just keep that in mind but moving on some interesting stories so Gary Gensler finally it's signed off he is the new SEC chief so it's official Gary Gensler is the new chair of the Securities and Exchange Commission after a 53 to 45 vote by the US Senate on Wednesday Look, I've seen some stuff on YouTube uh, with Mr. Gensler in it, and he seems like a pretty good dude. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm glad he's here. I'm just hoping that between him and Janet Yellen, we don't get crazy regulation that really just stifles this entire market. You know, I, I don't have a problem with KYC. It's going to be hard to KYC everyone. I'm sure, you know, they can work, you know, around those kind of things. But as long as they just don't over-regulate and then over-regulate it and completely stifle you know all this great innovation that's come forward with it because that is really what's taking us into a new financial dimension and system is the innovation it's been allowed to grow it hasn't been held back by over-regulation and things like that so congratulations to mr gensler uh, you know from what i've seen he looks like a really good guy and i think he's going to be really sort of you know good for the crypto space but you know Sometimes things don't always appear as they seem and you know Janet Yellen has you know Kind of said some good stuff and some not so good stuff and you know I'm sure he's gonna say similar things as well It can't just be you know, they come out and all they do is sing the praises of crypto. That's not gonna happen But you know again congratulations and I hope him and you know Janet Yellen can do some really really good things you know with this new technology that we have that's going to take us out of the stone age sort of financial system that you know we've been in for well over a hundred years now so it's old it's antiquated we know it doesn't work we know the issues with it and we now have something new and we know it does work and it works a whole lot better let's foster that let let's let that grow not yeah hold it back all right coinbase shares so they got off to a rocketing start and then fell back a little bit. They haven't, you know, completely tanked or anything like that. But so it says here they started uh, opening around three hundred and eighty-one dollars. So that was around about one thirty. Got as high as four hundred and thirty dollars. So that's a pretty good gain. Remember, we're talking stocks here. And then went all the way back down to three hundred and twenty-eight, and that was below the price of three hundred and forty-eight when it was. Uh, last exchanging hands uh, in the private markets and things like that but look three hundred dollars that's still pretty good excuse me and as I spoke about yesterday you know coinbase gave all of their uh, full-time staff members a hundred shares and so that would have turned out to be yeah, about twenty five thousand dollars just you know for working there so that's pretty good and I'm, I'm sure they probably sold a few but geez I'd be holding on to a few of them as well I mean if they were lucky enough to you know sell it around four hundred and thirty dollars uh, and then buy back in at around three hundred and thirty dollars then you know congratulations to them they did extremely well but you know I'm sure some of them would have sold all of them and others you know would have sold some and some would have sold none so either way uh, it seems to be holding its price fairly well right now but you know We'll just wait and see again like I said I wasn't sure whether I wanted to jump straight in and I thought I'd wait and so again that's exactly what I'm gonna do uh, I think these are gonna be good shares to hold long term but just whether these are the best price right now I don't know time will tell maybe I missed the best price and the best price was <laughs> down here who knows all right moving on ripple so we know ripples been doing extremely well so XRP spikes by 20% to a new three-year high and it's at almost two dollars we've had a retracement it's about a dollar seventy something now it was like a dollar ninety eight 
as CoinShares announced the launch of an exchange-traded product following the asset's performance. So after launching ETPs, so that's exchange-traded products, for Bitcoin, Ethereum and Litecoin, Europe's largest crypto investment firm, CoinShares, has continued expanding its portfolio with the addition of an XRP exchange-traded product. As with the previous similar initiatives, the XRP ETP will be listed and are on the regulated six Swiss exchange and each unit will be backed by physical tokens. So maybe that's had something to do with the pump. Who knows? Again, I will go back and we'll have a look at the charts and we'll see if XRP is actually holding that Bitcoin value because it's all good that it's going up, you know, uh, in dollars, but so is Bitcoin and a majority of other cryptocurrencies. So it's if it's holding that uh, Bitcoin uh, value and, and from the last time I looked at the chart it looked like it was so we might follow up on that again tomorrow and again if XRP lo looks like it's holding that then for me that'll be uh, an indication of maybe I want to get back in all right so Binance god the, the no wonder they're killing it Binance has announced plans to loin to list coin BUSD after the largest US based exchange goes public on NASDAQ later today. So there was a bit of volatility, so they held off. But um, so Crypto Potato reported the latest uh, initiative from the world's leading crypto uh, exchange, Binance, in which the company introduced zero tr uh, commission tradable stock tokens. So again, they started with Tesla, now they're moving to CoinShares. The so-called Binance stock token enable holders to qualify for economic returns on the underlying shares, uh, including potential dividends. So these uh, Binance, you know, sort of coins, not the Binance coin, but the coin that is based around uh, these shares, it's backed by the real thing. So that's why you're getting dividends and all the rest of it. But look, don't get me wrong, Binance are going to take a cut of that as well. But still, this is why Binance Coin is doing so well. It really is an Ethereum sort of killer at the moment. They're doing so much really good stuff with it. You know, they have almost no fees. I, I am legitimately concerned for Ethereum at the moment. And look, even uh, Cardano, they, they haven't got things going like this. You know, they're talking about it. But again, it's all good to talk about it. Binance is actually doing it. So I am actually concerned for ethereum but just when you know things feel the darkest ethereum is going to come out and say ETH 2.0 is basically you know almost here and ep1559 is done and you know all this stuff will happen ethereum will not simply sit back and let binance take over but they do need to pull their finger out and get onto it because binance they wait for no one and i am really dirty that i sold all my uh binance coins i mean i sold them for a profit and a pretty good profit so i can't complain but gee, I wish I hold on, held on to them now. Anyway, moving on. Grayscale. So, Grayscale continues to grow, passing 50 billion. That's equivalent to the world's second largest commodity ETF. So, they are growing. And look, there's now talk that they may get very close to the price of the world's largest commodity ETF. You know, if cryptocurrency keeps going the way it's going... And entities continue to buy up the Grayscale Bitcoin uh, Trust, which they do believe is going to turn into uh, an ETF in the future anyway. That is Grayscale's plan. Once the regulation and everything is sorted out, they will, ch uh, they will uh, convert their GBTC into uh, a Bitcoin ETF. So... <laughs> It's funny how you can get, you know, different sorts of news because we were talking about news the other day where people were complaining that, you know, it was selling at a, uh, selling at under price and, you know, people were losing money and there was one guy who, you know, wanted to sue and get his money, uh, be able to sell out at a higher price and things like that. Well, I'm going to say probably right about now they're laughing and going, you don't need, you can sell at the higher price that you wanted to now, but without Grayscale having to fork over any money and lose. That was really just sore loser type stuff. You know, you buy something and you can't handle the dips. Well, you know, it won't matter what stock market you go into, those kind of things could happen. Why do you think you can now come into the Bitcoin space and ask to, you know, be able to basically get out at a better price than what it's worth? But anyway, I'm sure this has fixed it all up right now. So, yeah, good on Grayscale, continuing to just power along and their Bitcoin ETF, when it finally gets passed, you know, it'll, it'll be the biggest by far. There'll be no one that'll be able to match that. No one at all. All right. A little bit troubling, but also good. So Wall Street bets. 
So, the Reddit forum that helped boost GameStop stock price will start allowing discussions about Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Dogecoin. So they didn't, they wouldn't allow any uh, talking about cryptocurrencies previously, but now they've decided that they're gonna, you know, open it up to uh, cryptocurrencies. So I think it's yeah. Here we go. So I don't see the point in delaying the inevitable anymore, as crypto is here to stay," said one of their moderators. After much deliberation, we've decided to allow for discussion about only Bitcoin, ETH, and Doge, though. So they're the only three that you can talk about uh, on that Reddit. You can't just go bringing up other random coins and you know try and do these big, massive pump and dumps on low liquidity coins and that. That's not what Wall Street bets is about. You know they copped a little bit of flack for what they did with GameStop, but look, in the end, they wanted to stop a company from going bust that didn't have to go bust now don't get me wrong the GameStop uh, stock price did come down eventually I'm not sure where it's at now but GameStop is still here they haven't you know gone completely bankrupt and you know had these big massive companies just you know do their nefarious business they, they need to be held accountable you know those big hedge funds and that have you know been sticking it to the little guy forever and a day and again there was the stories not that long ago well, was it Robin Hood I think uh, uh, anyway one of I think it was Robin Hood was selling the data to the big hedge companies so they could actually counter trade everyone so you know all the little guys i.e. you and me were getting together and buying this stuff and they were simply counter trading them and absolutely smashing them and you know again taking millions and millions of dollars from the little man not the little man having an individual millions of dollars but collectively they did and so you know i don't have a problem with that at all when, you know when they're kind of sticking it to those big guys and you know holding them accountable but i don't want them to get in and you know start shilling you know shit little coins with low liquidity and just you know completely and utterly burning people that i'm not for and and, and i don't think uh you know wall street bets are about that but I, I don't mind them sticking it to the big guys who've been absolutely, you know, sticking out, to, sticking it to us hand over foot for a very, very long time and getting away with some of the most shadiest stuff ever. All right, well that's it from me. So things are looking pretty interesting. Again, we go over here, refresh this. What do we got? So yep, yeah, we're come come back up a little bit now, which is good. So this was at uh, two point two nine nine trillion dollars. Uh, just before I first started this, dropped down to 2.293. Now it's back up to $2.297 trillion. So a bit of sideways action, but you know, some things are pumping, some things aren't doing so well. Uh, but you know, generally, overall, this is pretty good. We're above the $2 trillion mark and things just look really good there. But again, you know, I hate to be the bearer of bad news and I don't want to be, and I'm not saying it's going to crash, but you know, We've been in such a bullish run for such a long time. And I'm not saying it can't last for a whole lot longer. It definitely can. Just prepare yourself that, you know, you might wake up tomorrow and Bitcoin's $47,000. You might wake up, you know, in two days' time and Bitcoin is $32,000. And if Bitcoin loses that much, the alts will get absolutely shellacked. I mean, absolutely shellacked. You, you know, you'll have coins that'll lose, you know, I would say some of them would probably lose near 80% of their entire value. And that is where people get burnt. So you, you gotta, you know, have your risk management on point. And that is why I said, you know, if you're in a lot of profit at the moment, don't be afraid to take some profit. And I'm not telling you exactly what to do because I never offer financial advice, but maybe just get back. Again, if you're in lots of profit, if you're not in lots of profit, this is a little bit harder to do. But if you've, you know, three, four, five extra money, just get your initial uh, money back and then just let the less the rest ride. Yes, I know if it pumps so much higher, you're going to be kicking yourself and saying, geez, I could have made, you know, another couple of thousand, hundred thousand, million, whatever it may be. But at least if it flipped the other way, you weren't left with nothing. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that gain train at the moment. Things are still looking pretty good. And I'll see you next time.